Welcome, everybody. We have listeners from all over the world today. It's an amazing program that we have. Before we begin and speak to Nissim, I want to thank H.com, Project Inspire, and Hineni for coming together. In this time, in this world right now, what do we need? We need unity because in unity, there is strength. So here we are together, listeners from all over the world coming together as one family, strong, and we have to stay strong. My friends who are listening from all over the world, from all these three incredible organizations, what are we going to do today? We're living in an upside down world. What's normal anymore? We don't even know. Is it normal to go to school or is it normal not to go to school? Is it normal to go to work or is it normal to stay home? Is it normal to give a hug to grandparents or is that not normal anymore? So what do we do? We need to have faith, we need to have strength, and we need to have hope and light, which brings us to our guest today, Nissim Black, because Nissim is a man who has had such a courageous, courageous journey in this world. And Nissim has brought us to a place where we can see that somebody can stand for something, can be passionate for something greater than yourself. Today, we're going to hear Nissim's newest hit, Hava. We're going to hear the story behind the story. We're going to learn from Nissim what makes him tick, what's his story, how did he come to Judaism, and we're going to hear this newest hit along with a great message for bar and bat mitzvah kids who are listening today with their families because it's been a year of a lot of disappointment, a lot of confusion, a lot of chaos. So Nissim, we're going to hear from Nissim in just a few moments. And before we do, what we want to do is we're going to surprise Nissim. Nissim, you have given us so much. In our audience today, there are some very special fans of yours. And we want to tell you how much you mean to us. So before we get to all your story, we're going to dig deep. We want to hear from our very first fan. Our fan, before we hear from you from Nissen in Jerusalem, we're going to hear from our fan, Sam, who's going to speak to you, Nissen, today and give you a surprise from us all. Let's hear from Sam. To Nissen, I love your music, especially Motherland Bounce, because it conveys a passion for Judaism that is through a rap song, which is something I've never seen before. It has a great beat, great lyrics, and it's just an amazing song altogether. Thank you so much for all of your hard work. Nissim, 
I don't know. You didn't know we were going to do that. We have more in store for you. But we (laughs) want you to know that your journey has touched souls all over the world. And there are fans out there that you don't even know about, and you've inspired us. So let's start with this. I imagine that when you were a little boy, you didn't exactly have this hat on your head or a kippah, right? Or (laughs) it says, right? Tell us something, Nissim. How did you come to this? What made you choose Judaism? We're listening from all over the world right now. We're coming together. We want to hear from you. I think, you know, before one jumps into an awesome and great light, um, the spiritual principle is is that there has to be a little bit of darkness and uncertainty. Uh, So I did find myself in that place. As you said, you know, I did not grow up this way. Um, I grew up in a home of, unfortunately, drug dealers. Um, I was involved in that myself as a kid. A gang violence, uh, a lot of lot of drug abuse, as 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 you know, was going on around me. Um, so there was there was no way that if I would have wrote the book back then that I would have had this type of ending or, or or period at all. So it's most definitely right. But I experienced, you know, as being a rapper in the secular world. A conflict with another rapper um, that led me to a situation that was either, you know, to take a person's life or to have my life taken. And that was a very, very scary and um, moment for me at that time. And I think the biggest thing for me during that is it made me remember that, you know, I did have certain time periods in my life where I was very connected to spirituality um, at the time before it was Christianity. Uh, so it made me start to think, like, how did I get to such a place? A person like me who knew about prayer already, I knew about having a relationship with God. How can I get to such a place yeah. where, you know, I find myself in this darkness? Long story short, that situation was able to be, you know, subsided and put behind me. And looking forward, I said to myself that, you know what, if I allow myself to stay in the same circles and continue on with the same actions, then it's very likely that I'll be faced with the possible repeat of the situation, if, if not worse. So I stayed home and I prayed a lot and I prayed and I prayed and I asked God for direction. Along with that, I started picking up the Bible again. When I started looking at the Bible, I started to notice things that I had never noticed before. One of the biggest things that I noticed was that a lot of different verses that were used inside of you know Christian circles to talk about God's beautiful relationship with people we're actually talking about the Jewish people, wasn't talking about the churches. So I started to look deeper into things. Um, I started to study, you know, the, the, the roots of Christianity um, and, and even the roots of Islam. And underneath, you know, both boxes, you find Judaism. So I realized, you know, as a kid, I'd asked a lot of questions, you know, when I was in different study groups. And now this was my opportunity to look up all those answers for myself. Nobody was around. I grew up in the Jewish neighborhood, very, very, very close to the Jewish neighborhood. I didn't have so many friends that I could call and ask. So I asked Rabbi Google and I started searching and researching and I ended up here and there at at a Messianic temple for a couple of years. And then I discovered Chabad and I started going to Chabad. And I think the most beautiful thing about about it for me was, is that when I read the Bible, I didn't look for um, anything academic. I didn't look uh, for listen, anything. Listen, let so me much ask you learn. something. When when you give us this journey of yours, you did it really all by yourself, you know? There nobody was around. Nobody around. I mean, yeah. there, I think there are so many of us who are listening to you and feeling like that, you know? Even if right. you're born with it, it doesn't mean that you have the education or you have the school and you really had that courage I know that the last time that we spoke, you gave us a moment that was a turning point in your life. I'm going to remind you because after our interview, a lot of people who are listening said, hello, what did Nissim just say? Why did you ask him about that more? And I have to ask <laughs> okay. you, you told us that there was a moment that you found the FBI in your home as a little kid, and right. that was a turning point. That, that was awesome. Been, right. Can you tell us about that moment and about overcoming fear in life? You know, what, yeah, that was a very what, scary moment for me. You're you referring to I was eight years old. Is that old. okay? Can you share for that sure, with for us? For sure. For we sure. Appreciate it. I, tell us. A lot of my family, you know, was involved in um, criminal activity, drugs being uh, the, the main thing, I would say. And uh, we had noticed 
the family had sort of picked up the, you know, the phones were clicking in and out. They were glitching a little bit. And as it got closer to the morning, uh, people started to hear a, a little bit of commotion and whispering around the house. Uh, so there was a lot of stashes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> things got stashed. And, and before you knew it, there was a, a raid, an FBI raid on, on my house. And, and I remember waking up to my mother with a gun on her back and, and every single person in the house and inside of handcuffs. And I was there even startled as a kid. And, and I remember the FBI agent getting me dressed and, wow. and sent me off to school. And I had no idea who was going to be there when I got back home. I left with everybody in handcuffs. Very, very traumatic and very, very scary uh, situation uh, for me as a kid, most definitely. So how how would you think it's a good journey for a person listening today? Because right now the world is filled with fear, you know, mm -hmm. and you overcame something huge. What right. do you think, right. like just one thought that you can give us listening today, how to overcome fear in life? You know, I think one of the biggest things is that you know, I heard once, if you take a fish out of water, then the fish becomes almost insignificant. You watch it flap and there's no, no genius anymore seen to that fish. But once you put the fish back into water, you see it do amazing things. Um, for us, is, is the Jewish people, our water is our relationship with Hashem. And the more and more we are in that water, we're swimming, we see an amazing genius, the Jewish people. The more and more we move away from that, we start to feel cold. It's almost like, you know, I forget what the last planet is. It maybe switches every few years if it's Pluto, Venus, Mars, whatever the last one. It's so further away from the sun. So it's the coldest, right? And when we go away from the sun, when we go away from our source, right? Then we automatically end up in a place. Not that Hashem does it or something is making us do that. It's the fact that we are not in our water. We're not in where our genius uh, appears. Me meaning it's not in we faith. need to hold on to our faith, you know? Is that what you're saying? Like to, to I'm saying to the faith, faith. faith is built. Yes, the faith is built on the relationship, right? It's right. hard to have faith if you don't have the relationship. So Almost we need to develop the relationship with Absolutely. our people and our God. So let me Absolutely. ask you this, Nissen. Your relationship is strong. I mean, it's obvious you're connected and you've had such mm -hmm. a journey. How mm -hmm. do you stay strong in that relationship in the music world? Because you're known as a Hasidic rapper. I mean, what mm -hmm. a journey you've had. And the music <laughs> world is not exact. I mean, you're dealing with anti-Semitism. You're dealing with prejudice. You're dealing with values. Look at you. I mean, mm -hmm. you stand strong with your dread. I mean, one of the things that got us out of <laughs> Egypt was we stayed strong with who we were, with our identity. Right. How do Absolutely. you do that in the music world? What do you face in the music world? You definitely face that a lot. Um, you know, just even recently, he, he spoke about Motherland Bounce. If people knew the battles that I had to have with the record label <laughs> to be able to put out that song. Tell you us know, about me, that a little bit. They give me a gold medal. <laughs> they give me a gold I medal. You know, I mean, you, you know, fighting for, one, fighting for one to not have half naked women in the video. You know, I was dealing with a, a guy who I genuinely respect and look up to. I've honored his work in the secular world for many years. Um, but if for him, it's a different world to not sell, you know, half naked women in a, in a rap video it was like almost something unheard of for him and he comes from a different world and and for him for right. me to have that type of value was very very hard for him so another thing is pushed, you know i had you're pushed, Nissim, you're pushed like that what what should be the straight yep you're pushed against the wall and you stay right. steadfast that's why we're so inspired by you it's not just your journey in the past it's your journey today and yet right. absolutely yet you're able to stand strong and be successful and stay true to your values how do you do that I'll tell you what it is. It's exactly what I say at the relationship. I speak. I spend a lot of time in the day that I speak to Hashem from my own words. No wow. prayer books, no uh, no conference calls, no, nothing directly to Hashem. And I speak to him every single day on every single issue that I'm having. If I have a small headache, if I have a belly issue, if I have anything, I'm speaking to Hashem. And that's the way to build the relationship that keeps you strong. That's number one. Number two is I have an amazing, uh, you know, 
a group of people that I could speak to, and not group of people, I would say really my wife and my best friend I have one good friend. And I have a, not only one in the world, but I have one right. good friend that I know I could talk to. And I have my wife that I could speak to that's also very, very uh, strong saying, to make sure that I stay in pocket. Your relationship <laughs> with God, meaning it doesn't matter who you are and what you know, anyone can speak to God. And that is so empowering, I think, for myself, for all of us listening here today. It's not a matter of knowing Hebrew or knowing certain prayers. No. It's just a matter of knowing who you are inside and trying to connect. That- that was my biggest discovery of, of Judaism. You know, when I was reading the Jewish Bible, I didn't see anybody have amazing problems or go through struggles. And then so they read Arashi or Tosafos to start learning Gemara. What I see, everybody started crying out. They were praying to God. And that was the, that was the answer for everything. Even if we look wow. at the great Torah scholar of Ezra, right? right. You read the story of Ezra. What does he do? He resorts to prayer. He cries out. He in, encourages the whole That's entire it. nation to cry out to God. So that was the Judaism that I had come to know to love. And I think that without that, it's impossible to have any sin black. That's amazing. We're, we're coming soon to your newest hit, Hava. And I know this mm-hmm. is going to be a hit amongst all the <laughs> bar and bat mitzvah kids listening and their families. It just gets you on your feet and you want to sing and you want to dance. What's your story behind Hava? How did you come up with that? It's a very interesting thing because there was a producer um, who was making music with me and mine, and he didn't really have a way to connect with me um, directly. Uh, So somehow, some way, he got an old business line that has been taken over by my wife for, you know, school PTA meetings or whatever. And he sent it, uh, he sent the message there with, you know, with his work. And the first musical, you know, composition that he sent was a Hava Nagila. And As everybody knows Hava Nagila, right? Everybody knows Hava Nagila. <laughs> All over so the world. So I, 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 I said to my wife, I said, this is Nina Shemaim because there's no way. I have a very strong uh, system of how music gets to me, you know. Um, and he somehow bypassed it. That song gets there. And I was coming from uh, the grave of, you know, Shimon Natsadik, Simon the Just in Jerusalem. I was just coming from there with my wife and, you know, I have an amazing time speaking with God over there. And I get over there and this and this song starts playing. My wife puts it on halfway through the car and I said, oh my goodness, it's amazing. So I go home and I start singing it to my kids. And I start realizing my kids grew up in a Hasidic school. They never even really heard Havana Nagila. So right. I had to teach it to my sons. <laughs> I had to wow. teach it to my sons because they never heard it. So I taught it to my sons. And then I told him, I said, you know what? I want you guys to sing it. So it's my sons are the we ones want to hear it. Singing. We're going to hear it in just a few, few seconds because I know this is going to be one of your biggest hits, Nassim, really. <laughs> but before we get to that, we have another surprise for you. You have given us so much. We're oh. giving back to you. I want you to hear from another one of your fans who's listening today. And her name is Maggie. And listen to the message of Maggie Nissim because you're going to be touched as is everybody listening right now. Let's hear wow. from Maggie now. We want to give back to you, Nissim. Thank you. Hi, Nissim. It's Maggie. I've had the privilege of meeting you on multiple occasions, and you inspire me because your music, your journey, and your story have taught me that even if I'm not put in the right time or place, Hashem has a plan for me, and Hashem will take me to where I need to be. And even if the journey gets hard, Hashem will hold my hand throughout the entire time and take me to where I need to be. You have inspired me to just try my hardest in everything I do and just know that there's a plan for me out there. Thank you. Nissa, wow, that's amazing. Are you touched? You, you're so <laughs> busy giving everybody else. And we want you to know that you've given us and we want to give back to you Thank because you. You so not much. always when you perform, do you hear back, you know, and right. it's important to hear back that your right. work in this world has really touched so many of us. So amazing. We, we want to thank you with that. And we're going to come now to our clip about Hava. And I know that everybody listening right now is just going to want to sing and dance along with this because <laughs> you're starting a revolution. So to all our listeners all over the world, let's hear now from Hava. Yeah, have a 
a killer, I'm breathing. Yeah, having a killer, we even got a muscle toe for the game. Yeah, but I really do the thing. Yeah, dance, homie, got only. Yeah, guys, man, how they know me. Yeah, call me niece in the streets. Yeah, but we know, but like peace. Yeah, ain't trying to hurt nobody. We just came in a party like it's 5999. Yeah, they gon' see us in our prime. Yeah, big house coming down. Yeah, from the sky to the crowd. Yeah, we gon' sing it out loud. Yeah, black Jewish and I'm proud. Yeah, ain't a political man, yeah. ain't no political stance yeah. But when the beat knock a jam, yeah. and I got that hopper in hand yeah. Read cool when the beat smooth, 16's on a sweet tune Fast forward, then I rerun it, then I get down how we do I'm rapping, I'm rapping the beat, yeah. And it happens to be, I see how they reacting to me. I stay burning from drama, but everyone I know and they mama got burning questions on the table. Yeah, they want answers if I'm able. Mr. Black, do you got a caption? Or Mr. Cannon and the Jacksons? Did you read Polly on Twitter? Shut the feet, none of them considered. They may be strong, but I'm bigger. Yeah, so I move on, I won't listen. Yeah. Cause I work for the boss for the So I'ma win cause he rigged it no, All of it's predicted yeah, yeah. I ghost ride the whip and then whipped it Speed on them, no tickets yeah. God touched me so I'm gifted yeah. I got plans to make a dance I came here to make a move I know it feels familiar But this a brand new world That's amazing. This, um, I mean, I could see every kid and every family wanting that at their celebrations. You've really wow. inspired us because you've taken a song that has been a forever song and you've updated it and made it current. And <laughs> right. everybody wants that to be able to celebrate. Nissim, there's so many kids listening today who have had disappointments this year, you know, We've wanted to have celebrations. We've wanted to have our bar and bat mitzvahs. And we're frustrated, you know. What mm -hmm. would you tell a bar and bat mitzvah kid who's listening today about their disappointment? That's my first question to you. You know, mm -hmm. when you're missing right. celebrations in life, what could you tell us? I think one of the biggest things is to know that, you know, and, and I've said this to someone else, and I also, you know, have waited for a whole 12 years to <laughs> to give a bat mitzvah for my daughter. And it happened to be that it was, you know, last this Nissan, year? which was at the beginning of this year. She's, wow. uh, yeah, oh, it was last Nissan already. She's be 13 this year. So we also did a bat mitzvah. That was a Corona bat mitzvah. Um, and, and I, and I want to say that, Although, you know, your parents may be jumping for joy that they don't have to spend as much money this year. <laughs> yeah, that's I want to tell, <laughs> tell you, not only did you do them a, a big mitzvah, I want to tell you this, that Hashem knew from the beginning, that God already knew from the beginning of time that you were so special and so important that your bat mitzvah or bar mitzvah was going to be in this year. There's no mistakes or no accidents or anything. And to know that, I think and I feel that it is at a time where I feel overall that God is calling for everyone to draw a little bit closer, come closer to me, come closer to me. That has been the answer that this has been a time of, of if one taps into this time of 
uncertainty and what we don't know that at the same time you could feel this uh, this major gloom on the world that only comes because it's the time of the greatest light. It's the time of the greatest light that if you're able to tap in and hone in on this and you'll be able to realize that your bar about mitzvah comes at a time with great intimacy with God that he wants all of us to be close to him. So you I mean, think that the you bigger mean sacrifice, thing is Nissim, that sometimes it's more it's big in life. It is a, it's that sacrifice, right? Yeah. That you know, okay, everybody's gonna who's not gonna make a party when this whole thing blows over, God with willing, Hava. right? But with, the, Hava. but, the, but <laughs> with Hava, right, exactly. But I think the biggest thing is is to hone in on not so much as oh, why did this happen, right? But why do I get to? Why do I get to have so much attention? And I feel like it's it's people that had to have major events, which were supposed to be grand parties, whether it was right. a bar, bat mitzvah, birthday, that happened during this time, isn't really a punishment. It's really a blessing to be able to hone in and concentrate on that and building that relationship that we were speaking about before. I love so that. I think that people are very that. special. So you're taking take you're saying take this disappointment and take this challenge and use it to better your relationship with your God. Understand a Absolutely. little bit about yourself and your people. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think I want to tell you something is a very, very important spiritual principle that even I take upon myself. Anytime I find myself in a place of constrictedness or, or I feel very challenged right. or that I have to overcome something great, the way that I'm able to flip it around on its head is not to say, woe is me, look what happened to me, but rather to say, look at how much God believes in me. That he thought that I can be able to bear such a thing, that I can go through such a thing. So it increases my love for God because now I see my great importance to him because the Bible says that he chastised those who he loves. So the ones he loved, he'll put them in these places. So that means you get an extra sweet, sweet love from God that on the outside, it may look like another thing, but you'll, if you tap into it, you'll, you'll receive such the greatest joy that you could have ever possibly, and everything will flip around to a way that you will also understand its greatness I mean, also. It's like climbing a mountain and you're getting to the top through this challenge instead of having Absolutely. a pity party for yourself, because what does that do, right? Right. I'm right. sure you could have had many pity parties for yourself, you know, all of us, <laughs> right? But that's right. not what God right. wants us here for. God wants us to be able to have a purpose in our life and find meaning even in the challenge and even Absolutely. in the disappointment and make a difference in this world. I love that. Right. I love that. Yeah. So just if you would tell a bar about mitzvah kid in one line, what can you do to make a difference in this world? Yeah. At your stage, at your age, if this would be your own child, you said that your daughter, she missed her celebration. What can you do to make a difference in this world to all of us listening from all over the world today? Because we're from all over the world listening. It's a very, very beautiful question. Wish I would have had time for this one. <laughs> so I would say, you know, I think if I was talking to my daughter, one of the biggest things that, you know, that I did, it, I always feel so good to have things. But I think most people, if they're really honest and able to reflect that it's almost it's almost no comparison to what it feels like to give, right? right. To be able to give joy. Right. And I think that the understanding and having to empathize with other people, another, you know, struggle story, just really quickly, shortly after we converted to Judaism, me and my family ended up homeless. Wow. And we didn't have, we didn't have where to stay. We're staying from place to place, hotel vouchers from the state. We're on different food programs. I'm talking about from one whole year of just complete, uncertainty and unrest of staying from place to place to place. Shortly after I got out of this situation, I ended up, I applied for a job and I ended up getting a very, you know, very, very nice job. It was not the high, but it was a good job. And what was the job that I didn't even know really what I was applying for, but I applied for the job that was helping other homeless people. Now, if you can understand that helping people with, you know, uh, with homeless, that I was able to flip around my situation, have so much empathy and you can't understand the joy of being able to house a person who was unable to get housing because of different restrictions. So can you imagine the joy that you would have from planning and helping put on bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah parties, you know, for, for generations to come because you know what it's like to not, not be able to have had. I love that. Right? I love that. Take, you, your loss, so. take your loss. Take your loss. 
and use mm-hmm. it to help others who experience loss instead of just exactly. looking at yourself and feeling bad. Nissa, you are a gift to the Jewish people. <laughs> and we're Thank going to so hear much. one more fan of yours, Max. Okay, oh, wow. a great fan of yours. And before we hear from Max, and then we're going to go to another clip and hear some thank yous too. I have to thank you, Nissa, because you have shown your light in this world. You have taken a fire inside of you and you have just ignited hearts and souls. Just listening to you today, I know that all of us are on fire from you. I mean, thank Thank you you. and keep shining that light and keep having that courage and that strength and make music in this world because we need music to bring us (laughs) up and faith. So here we have another fan that I want you to hear. And to all our listeners, don't go away because we have another incredible clip from Nissim. Nissim, you're awesome. God bless. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Here's Max. Hi, Nissim. My name is Max and I'm a huge fan from New York. Your music has inspired me and people all over the world to be comfortable and confident in who they are. And your Jewish journey has shown me that when you put your mind to something, there's really no limit. Miss him. No limit. No limit. No, no limit. limit. <laughs> You're loved Thank and you you're so cherished by, your, by the Jewish people. Thank you for giving us your time, Nissim. You're awesome. Thank you. We're going Thank to be you. watching another clip of yours, and I hope we see you in Jerusalem very, very Amen. soon. Amen. Amen. That's it. Everybody. Keep shining that light, <laughs> Nissim. You have courage, and what a journey you have. God bless you, Nissim. Thank you God so much. God bless you as well. Thank, thank you. you. I want to thank I want to thank today our co-sponsors. I want to thank right now, I want to thank our co-sponsors, Rabbi Cooper Smith and Todd Rosenblatt from H.com. I want to thank Rabbi Yossi Friedman and Elisa Sakowitz from Project Inspire. I want to thank our Hineni family. We have come together. What an awesome program this was. To come together with unity in this time means that the Jewish people are alive and we're strong. Let's remember what Nissim told us to create this connection, to never be afraid, to hold on to our identity and to use any disappointment that we are feeling today, to feel any of our loss and use it to make this world into a better place. There are so many people in this world who can use your smile, who can use your hello, who can use your special magic that only you can bring into this world. So say, stay strong and bring your magic into this world and join us again. I thank you from H.com. I thank you from Project Inspire. I thank you from Hineni. And here we come to Nissim's final clip. Thank you all for listening. This place is a dope. We are royalty. We must go back to our place in Kiswana. No. We are staying right here. This is the motherland. Here. Here we go. For the motherland. Yeah. Yeah, we gon' play it loud until they feel it, yeah. Yeah, we gon' blow the roof up off the building, yeah. Yeah, we gon' play that motherland bounce. Check it out now, motherland bounce. Check it out now, motherland bounce. We baba. Yeah. Black and get a shopping with a Sammy Davis cousin. Tried to dodge the industry, but now my name is buzzing. They all saying that I'm conscious. I say that it's nonsense. So I say I've been on since on. Had an on switch from Seattle, the rainy city where my mom lived. In Jerusalem, the golden city that was conquered. But still, we moving onward. Motherland conquest. Smell me like an armpit. Yeah. Yeah, we gon' play it loud until they feel it, yeah Yeah, we gon' blow the roof up off the building, yeah Yeah, we gon' play that motherland bounce Check it out now, motherland bounce Check it out now, motherland bounce We 
Yabba. My mama told me that I read good. Been on my straight and narrow, but my history is the hood. Thank God today that we could buy a box of Cheerios or kicks. I can even buy tricks. I'm no longer on wick. EBT car rip in my passport lip. Step like a notary from every country that I went. Ain't a country like this from the others you've been sent. Black is beautiful. This gon' be the motherland hit. Yeah. Yeah, we gon' play it loud until they feel it, feeling, yeah. yeah We gon' blow the roof up off the building, yeah. yeah We gon' play that motherland bounce Check it out now, motherland bounce Check it out now, motherland bounce We baba Yeah, yeah, bounce Yeah, 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 bounce Yeah, 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 we bounce Yeah, 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 yeah He said it's God's plan But I'm God's man Yeah, I used to run with BGD I dropped the B and put a O after the G. Yep. Six points, still big up King D. In the synagogue, camouflage, but I can't wipe the skin off. I'm proud of it, it's loud a bit, but I'm not trying to crisscross. I done made it this far, hold it all in my heart. I hold my breath and brace myself when they take their socks off. Ain't no monkey business, cause ain't no monkeys in here. I know what you've been thinking, the black A blinking. Just wanted you to be aware. Signing off, it's Mr. Black, Hitler's worst nightmare, yeah. Yeah, we gon' play it loud until they feel it, yeah. yeah We gon' blow the roof up off the building, yeah. yeah We gon' play that motherland bounce Check it out now, motherland bounce Check it out now, motherland bounce We baba yeah, We gon' play it loud until they feel it, yeah. yeah We gon' blow the roof up off the building, yeah. yeah We gon' play that motherland bounce Check it out now, motherland bounce Check it out now, motherland bounce We baba You gotta take your hat off, man Another one? You gotta take your hat off, brother. I can't cut your hair. Tell y'all ain't from around here. You need to leave them chains here. You ain't gonna make it up the block. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>